Okay, for some reason there seems to be some controversy about how much power an amplifier like an AL811 will run with uh, 572B tubes. This is a refurbished AL811 uh, that we have here and it's a fairly new model. It has uh, three 572B tubes in it and the high voltage is just a tad over 1700 volts resting. It's running on a 120 volt main. I have a good main here. I have a bird watt meter, a bird peak reading watt meter with a thousand watt slug in the meter. And I'm on 40 meters with an ICOM 746. And I have a tuning pulser and the tuning pulser is on and we'll see where we're at. That's 140 watts of peak drive power. I've got fairly high uh, DC voltage into the ICOM and it's turned up a little let me do this kind of thing. So it's roughly 140, 145 watts right in there uh, pulsing. And so We'll take the amplifier and turn the amplifier on. It's on operate. I'll peak the grid current. I'll come up. Whoop, I got a little bit too much. This has got a TOF in it. So the TOF uh, kicked the amplifier off because I got the grid current a little too high. I'm up around 140 mils. That's where things kind of like to run at. And the high voltage is still around 1700 volts and we have 870 watts peak output and let's just see if we can get a little more than that so it looks like it's going to be around 880 900 watts right in that area And that's on 40 meters. That's the peak. Uh, that's the peak output power with a tuning pulser. So what I'm going to do with this amplifier is go inside it. It has the little cathode resistor uh, shunning the cathode, the 200 ohm, and that's to make up for the missing tube, so that the drive power of this amplifier more closely matches uh, the AL811H. So this little 200 ohm resistor re kind of replaces the missing tube so the drive power is about the same. It'll, it also helps stabilize the amplifier a little bit on 10 meters. Um, it, uh, because of feedback in the amplifier from plate to filament of the tube, um, it a little bit of swamping there uh, helps make up for this particular amplifier not having neutralization. So what I've done now on this amplifier is I've lifted the ground lead of the 200 ohm resistor off of ground and I'm going to put the cover back on and retest it. What this is, let me get zoom this back out. What this is going to do is let me have more drive power into the amplifier. The amplifier is on standby. I'm going to go back to single sideband so that I can run the tuning pulser. Tuning pulser is on. I'm back at about 140, 145 watts someplace in there of peak, uh, uh, peak envelope power for drive power. And... Uh, Turn the amplifier on. I'm getting a little bit of red from the TOF, so we'll, we'll tune it back to be around 130 mils or so of grid current. See if I run higher grid current, it goes into the red warning for these particular tubes like to be at around 130 milliamps and the output power is 1100 watts. 
So this amplifier, this amplifier with three 572 Bs, has not even saturated at 1100 watts. I don't know if we can get any more or not. Usually the TOF is really close. Nope, we can't really see tuning with the TOF and setting it so it was just out of the red right in here peaking the grid current with the plate control coming back to this we're about at the maximum output so it's a good way to tune it and we're 1130 watts so now let's see what we have on carrier there's the carrier 150 mils I'll run that up just a little bit there we go 900 watts of carrier Okay, I've overloaded the TOF there by tuning. Uh, looks like 940, 950 watts is about it. It likes to do that at about 150 or 60 mils of grid current, which is typical at real high drive to tune there, 920 watts or so. This is a carrier, folks, and it's been running on a carrier. And the tubes are okay. Plate current is wham, right against the pin. So, no big deal. 150 milliamps. Or when I run the pulser, 1100 watts. And the other thing I'm going to do here is set the spectrum analyzer up so it's on maximum hold for A, and then we're going to do a sweep of the uh, of the spectrum from 7140 to 7150. We're on 7146. Okay, so now I've got a microphone hooked up and I'm talking on single sideband. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And the peak envelope power here is reaching uh, about a thousand watts or so. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, one, two, three, four, five. So occasional peaks up around a thousand. And the grid current is staying within range. Um, I'm just not quite uh, tripping the uh, red warning light on the TOF. And. Uh, one two three four five four three two one hello one two three four hello one two and we'll come up here and look at the spectrum analyzer and so what we find is uh, we have 10 20 30 40 so we're about 30 or 40 DB down 10, 20, 30, 40. And that's pretty good. We'll erase that and we'll run the power down a little bit lower. I'll, I'll erase it and I'll tune the amplifier up so it's about 800 watts. Okay, so this is with about uh, 900 watts uh, PEP output. And it might be a little hard to read, but we're... I don't know if I can zoom in, in on it. Okay, so we're, let's go up the band a little bit. The two kilohertz up, we're minus 51 dB. Um, so that's two kilohertz up. And we'll go up a little more to four kilohertz. We're about getting close to minus 60 dB down. Um, about 58.7 dB down and if we check the lower side band we're in the minus 60 dB at 4 kilohertz but that's 4 kilohertz from the mean for, I'm sorry that's 4 kilohertz from the peak level of audio in the uh, upper side band or in the lower sideband so so we're really this is the voice channel right in here all this stuff all this stuff right in here so 
this would be the top frequency. So if I go um, right here and we set the marker to this level as zero hertz reference and zero dB, and we start tuning down from that, there's a little peak down here. And we get on that peak. We're 10 dB at 2 kilohertz. And then we'll come down here lower. Right in here. So we're 4 kilohertz down from the channel and we're at 35 dB. A lot of this is artifact uh, in the actual radio itself. Um, so the amplifier is contributing a little bit to it, but this is kind of actually how the radio looks. This is with the radio running about 80 to 100 watts PEP, driving uh, three 572Bs. So just as a point of reference, um, the amplifier is on standby right now. And one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five. This is just the ICOM all by itself. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And this is the trace. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. And I'm on uh, maximum hold for A. So let's go to view A so it quits recording. And we're on view A, and we see here, we'll go up here, uh, a couple kilohertz up, around in here, and we see we're at minus 48 dB, and we'll look at the, down here at the lower sideband stuff, and you see we have the same kind of stuff going on. Um, we're three kilohertz down from the maximum uh, level of the audio in the sidebands, and we're we're uh, minus 32 dB from the peak output level. So the amplifier really doesn't contribute a whole lot more IMD than what the exciter has all by itself.